Hello, and welcome back to ISYE 320-321 at UW-Madison. This video is part of the Basic Arena Tools series that follows the introductory video, which you should watch if you haven't already. So the most important module that we'll talk about is the process module, and it's because it sort of defines how everything is laid out in Arena, and it's the main approach that Arena uses to sort of doing work or representing doing work in a system. So I'll go ahead and drag a process module in and then double click on it. And you'll notice it's a little bit more complicated than all the other modules that you've seen so far. Uh, but again, you can change the name. And then uh, the type is usually you'll leave with standard and submodel is a little bit more advanced. And submodel essentially allows you to sort of build out a model and then have that model be represented by a process module. So essentially that model is a sub-model within a larger uh, system. And for logic, this is essentially how the process behaves. And when thinking about processes, you have to remember that Arena takes a very entity-focused view of the world in that the things that are flowing through the system or through your flowchart are actually the most important thing and the view, their view of the world is actually sort of what is represented in Arena. So think about when an entity flows through a process, they're actually the one doing the job. Even though, for example, if you have widgets flowing through a production line, let's say uh, metal blanks going down a production line and they go to a drill press, you think of the drill press operator and the drill press they're the ones that grab the piece of metal and then drill a hole into the blank. Um, but Arena sort of thinks of it the other way. So Arena views the world as uh, the blank piece of metal is the most important. And when it needs to go get a hole drilled, it'll go grab an operator and it'll go grab a drill press and they'll work for it. And then when they're done, that piece of metal will let go of them. So that's really how you need to think about which one of these options to pick for uh, logic action. So there's a couple of different options. There's one that's delay, one sees delay, uh, another one sees delay release, and then delay release. Most of the time, you'll probably use sees delay release. And what you need to do is think about, I'm an entity flowing through this process. I'm the piece of metal. What am I going to do to the operator or the resource that I need? And oftentimes, for example, with that piece of metal, I'm going to need to grab an open operator. I'm going to need to seize it. And then I'm going to have to delay it because it's going to have to do some type of work on me. And then when it's done with this process, I'm going to let go of it so I can release it. Uh, sometimes you'll need to seize and then delay a piece and then maybe do another operation and so then you won't get get rid of the operator or you won't let let go of that fixture in that case you might just have a seize delay but then further down the line you might have another process module that's just a delay release uh, usually when you have uh, an entity that's been seized you should release it later on in the process um, otherwise you'll end up with uh, no resources left to do your jobs so we'll select Seize Delay Release here, and we're allowed to pick a priority, which essentially says if uh, there are several entities waiting for a resource, is this the most highest priority? And then it'll essentially say, if you say it's high, it'll preempt uh, other jobs from being done that might have been waiting before. And then there's a list of resources. This is where you add the resource such as the operator or the machine that you're using and you'll need to do in order to use a new one you'll have to add it uh, and you can select from the existing list of resources and right now we won't have any here but you can just go ahead and start typing a new new resource name so you could just say machine one and quantity is the number of that resource that you need to do that process. It's not the number of machines, it's actually the, the number of machines you need to do that job. 
So even if we have 10 or 15 of this, these machine ones, if all you need is one machine to do that job, then you're just going to have a quantity of one there. So we, we go, go ahead and press OK, and Arena will have automatically created a resource for us. And we'll talk more about resources in a little bit. Uh, but for this C's delayed release, or any of these C's and release type uh, actions, you'll need to have a resource. Otherwise, Arena will yell at you. Finally, down here, we get to specify what the delay process is like. So you get to pick a distribution, either constant, normal, triangular, or uniform, or an expression. And you can use the expression builder. And then you pick a time unit. Make sure that these units match if you see some weird things like a queue building up or things going too fast. And then you can also spe specify if this process is a value-added process, non-value-added, transfer weight, or other. And actually, on the output report, if you have this little report statistics box come out, uh, you'll have some nice things showing how long uh, things will wait in a queue for this process, uh, how long this value-added process might have taken in the grand scheme of things. So the process module is really, really powerful. Uh, you'll have to spend a little bit of time sort of working through the notion of Arena has a very entity-focused worldview and understanding which action is the right, for, right one for the process you want to model. Um, and oftentimes you might have to sort of combine several process blocks in, a, in different ways and have them, one maybe be seized delay and another one followed down the line with delay release for the same resource if you have a resource sort of follow a entity down the line with it, maybe like a fixture. So that's the process module, and I also want to talk about uh, sort of the next thing that comes along with the process module, which is the resources uh, that, use, um, that Arena uses. So if you go over here, there's a little uh, data module called resource, and double click on it, and we'll actually take your, make you look down towards the spreadsheet view, and you can actually see a row representing that new machine that we made. So you can see there's machine one, it has a fixed type, fixed capacity, and the capacity is one. So that means that there can only be one metal length flowing through it at a time. You can always change the capacity to be more. And what that capacity actually means is it's almost as if you're making two machines if you were to put the capacity up to two, because it'll Arena will look at it like, oh, well, up here you told me I need one machine to do that job. So if I look at that resource, I have two capacity, a capacity of two, and I only need one. So that means I have like two machines. So that's how you represent multiple machines or multiple servers. And then you can also add various busy, um, idle, and per use uh, sort of dollar increments and arena will do cost but like cost analysis for you we won't go too much into that in this course i don't think so don't you don't need to worry too much about it and then following resource there's another data module like to take just take a look at which is the queue and for every process that has sort of a c's in it it'll create a queue because you need to wait for that resource to free up before you can start using it. So you can see that process one queue has already been created. We didn't even we didn't even name a queue like that, but Arena knew automatically since we had that C's right here that it needs a queue. Going back to the queue, we can see what type of queue it is. So it's a FIFO queue, meaning it's first in, first out. You can choose if you want a LIFO queue, last in, first out or you can sort based on attribute values. So you would pick an attribute for one of the entities slowing through and then use that to prioritize uh, which of the entities in line to grab first. Usually though, you use FIFO or LIFO. Um, sorry about that. So that's it for the process module. It's definitely the most complicated one. So you'll really wanna sort of spend some time thinking about it and uh, the best way to learn it is to try it out, make mistakes, ask your TA, am I doing this right? Am I thinking about this right? All right, that's it.